Hey, this is Eric Kurtz, and in this video, we're going to take a look at how you can use Google Drawings to teach and to practice adding integers, that is, adding positive and negative numbers. Uh, so what I've done is I've put together a template that you guys can use here. Uh, this Google Drawings template can be um, accessed at my website. Go to controlaltachieve.com slash adding integers and that'll dump you right into the blog post where you're going to find the link to access this template. Now when you do open up this template, it is view only, so you will need to make a copy of it. You'll need to go up to file and then make a copy so that you get your own version that you can then edit um, as well. I've already done that uh, with this one here. All right, so how does this work? Well, basically the way it works is you start off by typing in the problem. So we'll go ahead and remove what's in the template here and we'll kind of start fresh with this. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a positive and a negative number together. So for this example, let's say we're doing um, a positive seven and we're gonna add to that, let's do a negative three. All right, and so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna represent the positive seven and the negative three by using these colored circles. Uh, as you can see, positives are red, uh, negatives are yellow. So I'm gonna need to drag over seven positive circles um, and then three of the negative circles, so seven reds and three yellows. Now you can do this a couple of ways. You can just grab individual ones one at a time and drag them over, that's certainly fine. Or if you want, you can actually click and drag a box around to grab a whole bunch of them and drag all of those over all at once. Or you can do that and you can also use your control key to click and grab some extras. So in that case, I needed seven of them. And by dragging a box and then by using my control key, I can grab that seventh one. So whatever, whatever works for you is certainly fine. Uh, we'll do the same with the negatives. We'll go ahead and grab these two here. Then I'll hold down my control key and grab a third, drag those over. Excellent. So now we've set up the problem. We have seven positives and we have three negatives. So a positive seven plus a negative three. And we want to add these together. Now here's where we show what happens when you add positives with negatives. The idea is you're going to take one positive and one negative at a time and put one on top of the other to add them together. Now watch what happens when I take a positive and I put it on top of a negative. Well, because the positives are red and the negatives are yellow, when I put a positive with a negative, it turns orange. And so that represents zero or neutralizing. A positive plus a negative cancels each other out. A plus one and a minus one, well, that's nothing, that's zero. So we've got seven positives and three negatives. So if I keep repeating this process, eventually I'll get to a spot where there's no more things I can combine. These three positives canceled out. These three negatives, poof, they're gone. They're all just zeroed out. And so I'm left with one, two, three, four positives left over. So that would be the answer to my problem. I'm left with a positive four for my final answer. And so this is a nice way to illustrate the concept of adding integers, adding positives and negatives by modeling them with these different colored circles and then putting um, them on top of each other to show canceling out the positives with the negatives. And whichever one there's the most of left over at the end, well, there's your answer. Add up the positives or add up the remaining negatives and put that in for your final answer. Now when you're done, of course, you can just reset the whole thing, drag the circles back over, or you could use your undo button to undo what you've done, or just open up a new copy of the template, whichever way works for you. But this could be useful for you as a teacher, to demonstrate to your class, you could have this up on the screen and you could be modeling this, but it'd also be great for the students, for them to practice this as they use um, their Chromebooks or their laptops or desktops to go ahead and uh, run through these problems as well together. All right, now before we um, leave that entirely, some of you may have a quick question from a technical point of view, and you may be wondering, 
how did I get these uh, circles to blend? Because <laughs> you notice, if I move this over, I do have a red and a yellow circle, and when I put them together, they are in fact making orange. And if you use Google Drawings frequently, that may be something you're curious about. Well, how did that happen? Because that's normally not what happens in Google Drawings. So just for those of you that are curious, let me go ahead and I'm going to pop over to another Google Drawing, uh, just a blank one here, and I'm going to show you real quick how I did that, because you may want to use that technique for other things like creating Venn diagrams or other things where you need transparency so that things blend together color wise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just demonstrate this real quick. I'm going to go and I'm going to create a circle for you. So grab the circle tool. Now I'm going to hold down the shift key so that when I drag that circle out it stays as a circle. Otherwise it could become an oval. So holding down the shift key keeps it exactly circular. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste that so I've got a second copy of that circle. And then I'm going to go ahead and color these. We'll fill the first one in with red, and then we'll fill the next one in with yellow. And you'll see that normally when you do this, if I were to grab a red circle and put it on top of a yellow circle, one of them would be on top of the other. Now I created the yellow circle later, so the yellow circle is actually the one that's on top. They don't blend under normal conditions, okay? Normally that is not the case. Now if I wanted to, I could come in here and change the order to make the red be in front but still it's not going to make any difference. Now the red's in front, so there's no blending going on. So how do you actually do that? Well, it's, it's actually a transparency setting that is a little um, hidden away. You may not see it normally, but if I click on this circle and I go up to my paint can, instead of just picking a regular color here, if I go down to custom, when I bring up custom, I get these sliders, and the slider on the far right, that's actually a transparency slider. So if I grab my little controls here and I drag this down, let's say about halfway, I'm moving from totally solid to completely transparent. I'm gonna go about halfway there and hit okay. Now if I do the same thing over here with the yellow, and I go to custom, and I drag that transparency down and say OK. Now the yellow is somewhat transparent. Now watch what happens as I drag this red on top of the yellow. Yep, there we go. Now we're seeing through the one to the other, and that gives us that orange in the middle. So that's how I did that. If that's something you'd like to replicate in other projects, definitely feel free to do so. Well, guys, as a reminder, all of this uh, information, uh, a blog post explaining this in detail, as well as the template that you can freely uh, uh, make a copy of and use however you want, can all be found on my website, controlaltachieve.com. Specifically, go to controlaltachieve.com slash adding integers to jump right into the blog post and to be able to download that template from there. While you're at the website, definitely check out the blog with all the posts that are there. I've also got tons of resources in lots of different categories. There's even a, new, a newsletter you can sign up for to stay in the loop on my most uh, recent uh, information. And there's a section on webinars. You can see my upcoming webinars as well as past recorded webinars. And I do mention that because if you liked this um, video about using Google Drawings for teaching uh, how to add integers, I actually do have a webinar here on the webinars page called Teaching Math with Google Drawings. It's an hour long webinar that goes into way more detail on tons of different ways Google Drawings can be used to teach math. So definitely check that one out if what you saw here was interesting to you. Thanks so much for watching the video and uh, see you next time. Take care.